like. <laughs> no, I'm a woman. I believe in civil rights. I, I can see that. Yeah, woman. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm against violence in speech. And I love everybody that's here because I love God and I get God in my heart. And God is love, isn't it? Isn't he, it? He is love. He is love. So what I just feeling is that people have to be treated with respect. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, I believe that women are not is not treat, we are not treated with respect in this world. So I believe I I know my Bible as well, and it's something that I'm, she really challenges me because I know what you're saying. But at the same time, I have so many friends that are gay, and I love them so much. And I love this country. I'm from Brazil. And I've been here seven years. And I love the way Ireland is so open to diversity. And I love, I love this about this island and about Ireland and about this city. So when I go back to Brazil, I see men looking at me like, ah, I'm going to take you home. Like, I don't want to be violent in any way or anymore, you know? I don't want to be raped, ever. And as a man, maybe you won't get this point of view. No, no, no. I have sisters. Okay. I have a wife. My, uh, personally. I, well, obviously, I will never fully experience what a woman goes through, and you will never fully experience what a man goes through. Yes. But all I can say is, if you're going to a place where there's a bunch of men that you feel will rape you, they are rapists. But I am not going to blanket statement every single Brazilian and say all Brazilian men are racist, because that, I mean, rapists, because that means your dad is a rapist, your brother is a rapist, your uncle is a rapist. Are they? No. Okay, so... Thank you, God. <laughs> uh, right, so I'm sure you can find tons of perverbs in Ireland. Yeah. You can find tons of men chasing women and looking at them as sex objects. You can... Where are you, where are you bringing this? Uh, oh, okay, but, it, but right now bring it here because... Because I can't even hear when there's so many people. So, lust is everywhere. Yeah. Rape is everywhere. So, you know, in this culture in Ireland, you may not see it, but a lot of these people have been abused by priests, Roman Catholic priests. So, I mean, it doesn't mean every Catholic priest is a rapist, but there's a lot of abuse have happened in Ireland. So, you may not be experiencing that as a woman, but you, in Brazil might have different expressions of lust. This is why I preach repentance. Now, I don't think anybody in this circle would say rape is right. No person in this circle. So nobody's going to say I'm judging somebody for saying don't abuse your kids. But all of a sudden when I start getting on other issues that the Bible speaks about, everybody says don't judge. All that means is that somebody is being extra sensitive for behavior patterns that are not healthy. And a lot of people do that. Some families will even cover up their sexual abuse say don't judge only God can judge no it is not true you don't live by this only God can judge nonsense nobody lives by only God can do non nonsense nobody because when people come to me like that lady who thinks she's so smart saying why don't you go home guess what she judged me she judged me didn't she yeah we talk about freedom so if I'm so free, if, if Ireland's so free, then let me be free. Let me say what I want to say, be as crazy as I want to say, preach whatever I want to say. But in reality, we're not that free, are we? We're not that free. And I agree with that. Right, I know you agree. So everybody should treat women with respect. Every person should, should look after the people in their life. God is love. God does care. And this is why I preach Jesus, because Jesus Christ showed what love is really all about. It's sacrificial. Yeah. It's not selfish. It's not chasing after women. You're staring at me like what I'm saying is crazy. I, I don't know what it is that I'm saying that you're struggling. You're saying I am crazy, but I'm not crazy. Can I say something else? Yes. yes. So the reason I really felt compelled to come here is that I was talking to Patty when we were here and another guy there that gave me a card for his ministry. And I don't know, I just feel really challenged about this discussion. You know? Sorry? I, I really feel challenged about this discussion. I think it's really interesting to talk about it because it's been so hard for a lot of people in this island to 
feel not accepted in everywhere in the world. Thank you, thank you, uh, two men that were in this discussion for the discussion. I hope that you learned about Pope Francis. I hope you learned about what the Bible says, and I hope you had. Uh, you know, I showed a lot of respect for him. We went back and forth. He had his time on the microphone. I disagreed with some of his words and his theories, but I did it in a respectful way. Yeah. And I even asked, it's not about hatred, it's about what's right and what's wrong. I don't have to agree with everything that people want to agree with. Yes. So, go, so, so yeah, I understand your struggle, but I don't think you should wrestle with what is right and wrong. I think everybody should think about people that are, when people are not living right or doing something that's destructive, we don't hate anybody, you should find ways to help them not endorse negative patterns. Yes. Yeah. So I don't see where the wrestle is in your mind or in your heart, but maybe you can explain if there is. Yes. So I don't exactly know why I have the wrestle in my heart. <laughs> and I ask Jesus every day, like, give me acceptance or something. Because some, some things in the Old Testament really treats me, especially women with women, men with men, blah, blah, blah. And nowadays, things are different, you know? Our, 2,000 years after what is written there. Well, well, well you know, it, it's not that different when I look in the Bible because even there's a, there's a whole story about one community, Sodom and Gomorrah, where there were same-sex relationships. And um, everywhere I've been when I've interacted with the stronger uh, people, uh, LGBT communities that are larger than others, unfortunately, my experiences, they become violent. I don't know why, but they do. And they become very, very hateful towards God. Very. So when I read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, it makes a lot of sense because these guys became forceful with their sexual activity. So about 60 years ago, the LGBT community said they just wanted equal rights. They don't want to change marriage laws. They don't want to talk, get involved with your kids or teacher in the school system at all. It's just about their freedom. They just want to live in peace in their own small communities. 60 years later, they're not satisfied with just living in a small community. They want the entire world to accept it or be canceled. They want the kids to learn it or, or be expelled from school. They want everybody to watch it and if you say anything, you're homophobic. So now they want to parade it around everywhere. They have more rights than everybody else. They even got to the point of trying to change marriage laws, and they have. They forced the entire world. In fact, African nations can't even get grants from the United States or uh, uh, first world countries without accepting homosexuality. So. What happened to this peaceful movement, this loving, non-forceful love is love movement, except everybody? It is a lie. This is why God burned Sodom and Gomorrah. Because that lifestyle of sodomy, according to the Bible, spread like cancer and destroyed civilization. And every time it started to grow in any historical civilization, it destroyed the community. And if you look up any statistics, and we can look up today about that lifestyle, most HIV, 80% of every new HIV case is from the LGBT community, 80%. LGBT community people have more uh, sexual partners than any community on this planet, and they're such a small community, in per capita. They struggle with alcohol and drug abuse, almost 8 to 12 times more than any community in society. So there's a lot of problems in that lifestyle. But if you look on Google, YouTube, anywhere there is internet or social media, there are thousands of people escaping the lifestyle and testifying that Jesus Christ set them free. And there is hope. The reason why the gospel is preached is not to condemn Jesus said, I've, I haven't come to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved. That's why we need to preach. It's not a struggle for me. It's, do I believe God's word about certain lifestyles? Is it true? And this is where real Christianity comes to, comes to core. Because if you're a real Christian, you believe God's word. 
text. Amen. And if you don't understand God's word, the Bible says in James chapter 3, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who will give liberally to them that ask. So there was a lot of things in the Bible that I struggled with at one point, but I had to make a choice. Do I believe God or not? But I was like, I can't just make a jump and say I believe God when I don't understand. So what I did, I did my research. I prayed about it. I meditated on certain things of the word and God gave me the answers. And then I said, oh, that's why God made them male and female. Oh, that's why there are certain roles that men and women carry. Oh, that's why God doesn't approve of same-sex attraction. Oh, that's why God says don't commit adultery. That's why God says don't sleep around. For the average person, they don't understand why it's wrong to sleep around with Tom, Dick, and Harry. They think it's okay. But if you dig into why it's wrong, you'll understand, wow, this not only destroys trust, it, it, it breaks, it, 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 it destroys uh, people's integrity, people's confidence in, 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 um, in uh, marriage. It destroys the family unit at the core. This is why it's wrong. So if you want a happy life, you should refrain from sleeping around and wait for the right person. See, everyone wants to be treated, a girl wants to be, a lady wants to be treated like a woman, a lady, somebody that's respected, dignified. But what do they do? They act undignified, let any kind of guy come along, sleep with them. That's not what the woman Sorry? That's not what all women do. Okay, not all women, okay, you're right. Just like not all Brazilian men rape women. Okay, <laughs> good, all right. So, so some women, unfortunately, they open up their legs and they sleep around and then they get broken hearted and they wonder why their relationship why didn't work. Judging now. Exactly. Sorry? And you're being judging now. It is true. Okay. It is true. But it's, what, what, it's, no, 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 no. I'm just yes, quoting. I'm just quoting be, a reality. It uh, can be uh, harsh for people. It can be harsh for people that've been through this place. Listen to this. What? Well, well, look, look. I don't, I don't know how to get around. No, no. But I don't know how to get around reality. I mean, if you, if you sleep around, you know, there are consequences for what you do. Like if I tell somebody, if you, if you have unprotected sex, and a lot of people end up getting HIV. I mean, if that's offensive, that's judgmental, then I guess in some way, I mean, so be it, because I would rather offend you now to help you to avoid HIV than to just be nice with you and say, you know, I love and love, man, just enjoy life. You get HIV and then you're crying and you can't help yourself. And then who, who's the bad guy now? The bad guy is me because I knew what you shouldn't have done, what could have saved your life, but I didn't say anything. And this is the problem. Love doesn't mean don't say anything. Yes. Love means sometimes you got to tell people the truth. This is in the definition of love. In fact, I pulled it up on, on my uh, on online Bible in, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where, where the King James Version defines it as charity, 1 Corinthians 13. It says charity never fails. In most translations, it says love never fails because this type of love, the reason why they translate charity is the word, it's coming from the word agape and the, and the word agape is different from philios, which, which is a brotherly love. This is uh, the love that God has and it's sacrificial, which means I love you to help you, not for what I can get. That's why it's called charity. Charity never fails. Oh, sorry. Charity suffers long. Okay, why, why would someone even want to put a speaker when another preacher is preaching? I have no clue. But charity suffers long. It's patient. Charity is kind. Charity envies not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not proud. Charity is not puffed up. Charity does not behave itself unseemly, so it doesn't do what is wrong. Charity doesn't seek after her own. It's not selfish. It's not easily provoked thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. So this is interesting because love doesn't rejoice and say, you know, love is love, man. Enjoy your love. And, but it's wrong. Love actually rejoices in what's right, not in what's wrong. So when I see something's wrong, I say, brother, I love you so much, man. You got to stop smoking, man. Oh, don't judge me, man. No, 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 no. It's not about judge, man. I actually love you because I don't want to see your lungs fail in five years and then you can't breathe properly i was i was in a store sorry just transgress uh, 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 digress for a moment i was in a store 
remember our brother, uh, one, one of the guy, the guy on the, the video, me and him walked in a store, we, we were buying some chicken. No, no, it was, a, it was a convenience store, actually. I believe it was a convenience store or a chicken store. We walked in, and there was a very heavy set guy, and he was... <laughs> remember that? He was breathing so heavy. And I looked at him, and, like, I've never seen somebody breathe so heavy. It, it actually seemed like I was around the presence of a hippopotamus who's breathing heavy. He was very big, and he was breathing heavy like he couldn't breathe. And I looked at his weight. And I believe very strongly it was because he was heavily obese. Heavily obese. This guy was damaging his body to the point that he couldn't even breathe. This guy, I mean, if he keeps that up, I cannot see him for the, for the, for the, the love of me living beyond one more year the way he was breathing. This guy was literally abusing his own body to the point that he can't breathe. So if I love this guy, should I just say, hey man, brother, enjoy life, man, eat your burgers and fries? Is that love? Or is love like, hey brother, listen man, I love you. How can I help you so you can breathe better, man? Because I think it's your weight. You got, you got to get on a diet, brother, and I will help you because I love you. I want to see you live more than one year because if you don't, you're going to die. That's love. So that's why we preach. We don't preach because we hate. We actually preach because we don't want to see anybody go to hell. Amen. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. It's just I'm coming from a place that my two best friends are gay. Yeah. And it's really hard for me to say to them, like, it's wrong to love your husband. You know, it's wrong to love your boyfriend. And it's not like about lifestyle that I'm talking right now. I know the lifestyles are of gay, seen, whatever. But about specific people in my life that I really love, and I struggle every day, like, oh my God, is that wrong? You know? Life is, life is a yeah. It is a struggle. Yeah, but, but you know what? But it's still, Look, there's still just, part. You, <laughs> you know, know? I, I, I came from a, a gang lifestyle. I was, in a, I was in a gang in Toronto, and one of the largest young kids, gangs at the time, teenage gangs. And when I became a Christian, I wanted all my friends to come with me. I wanted all, but they didn't. They did it. Um, one of my friends got beaten to death with a bat. He's dead. Another one of my friends got stabbed to death. He's dead. Another of my friends got shot five times in his head. He's dead. Another friend of mine overdosed on fentanyl. He's dead. Another friend of mine got shot in his head. He's dead. I wanted all these people. I, I, another friend of mine, he's in jail for life for murder. I mean... I can't even find one of my other closest friends. I mean, he, his life is probably so messed up. The last I heard, he has like he has like seven kids with five different women. I mean, I don't know how hard that is. I mean, you got to be either extremely rich to support five women with seven kids. So his life is either totally busy or he's really messed up mentally. So this is the problem is that I wanted them to come. I've preached to them. I've tried so many times but they didn't come so what do you do i mean you've done your part i i share with them people have their choices i'm not gonna change my mind about destructive lifestyle because you're my friend you're my friend so much i'm gonna tell you i have friends today that won't talk to me i have a friend that became a pimp he blocked me on facebook i was his best friend growing up I had another friend that we were like, he was like my best friend too, like a second best friend. We ran track with each other. We drank with each other. We smoked weed together. We, we, we did all, everything together. We, we, we looked at girls to each other. We chased girls together. We did everything. This guy doesn't want to talk to me at all. I had another friend I played football with and he became a professional football, and I'm talking American football, not soccer. He became a professional football player. We were really close. We, I mean, he drank his first 40 ounce with me. He smoked his first joint with me. Uh, you know, we, we, were, we were boys. We hung out. The moment I became a Christian, he didn't want to be my friend anymore. And now, like, I'm, I'm I consider him my friend. He doesn't even want to meet with me. He's like, bro, we just have a different point of view, man. I, I just can't be in your presence, bro. And it hurts me. But he's made his choice. I'm not going to say, well, maybe my friend, maybe what I believe is wrong. And maybe, maybe it's because he's my friend and, you know, I, I got to bend over. No, I can't bend over because I wouldn't be true to myself. Yeah, now I'm going to say something. 
So I recognize that I'm a very privileged person, wise. I'm beautiful, I think. <laughs> uh, I come from a very rich background, and I recognize that after I moved here. <laughs> because before that, I was in a bubble, you know? And it's very hard to see the real world in a bubble. And I believe that, I, I know that. And after struggling with rent and doubling rent and all the struggles, I know that there are people, there are people that are different, and there are people that are in need. In fact, I came here to do the slip run, but I'm staying here forever. <laughs> uh, so I love. I, I think because of Jesus, I got converted here in a, in a church six years ago. I got baptized, but my whole family they don't have what I have yet. Re personal relationship, 10% with Jesus. And I know what you're talking about because I pray for that. And sometimes like, oh, how can they come quicker to you, God? I know you're coming back. When are you going to get into your heart, you know? So I'm just saying that it's a struggle for me. I'm very thankful that I stop here and you're here. And it's going to make me think more and more about this. Amen. Amen. Come on, give her a big hand. Woo!